Greetings. So, the study of geometry, specifically Euclidean geometry. What Euclid did was not write down and invent geometry. What Euclid did was he took about five to six hundred years of geometric knowledge that had been worked at, solved, puzzled over, written down by various scholars all over the known world at the time. And Euclid worked at a place that gave him unique insight. He worked at the Great Library in Alexandria. This is the repository of the world's knowledge base. It's the Wikipedia of its day, living inside of the Google house, if you will. And what Euclid did was he took all of the fragments of geometric knowledge and in his own mind spread them out and figured out how do I put this in some working order? How do I canonize what it is we know? And as we have earlier, we've already looked at all of the definitions he would use, but today I want to focus on these, the five fundamental postulates. And these come in different, I almost want to call them uh, different levels or different themes. Theme is probably a better word. Let's take a look. The first postulate, to draw a straight line from any point to any point. Obvious. Tell me where A is, tell me where B is, and I can go from A to B with a straight line. Now remember, for Euclid, a straight line is finite. He's talking about a line segment when he says line. That is a postulate of construction. It says, if I know two locations, I can connect the two locations with a straight line. Look at number two. To produce a finite straight line, what we call a segment, continuously into a straight line. Meaning, if I can go from A to B, with a finite straight line, I can then extend past B or past A, and if I go in both directions, I get an infinite straight line. This is also a postulate of construction. It says there's a, something else going on here. It says I can construct something that's infinite from something that begins out as finite. The third one, to describe a circle with any center and radius. So if you give me a center, O, and you tell me this is how big the radius is supposed to be, I can go around it. Now, this is also a postulate of construction. I can construct this circle, and I have to know two bits of information. Here, where is the center of the circle? And here, how far away is the edge, or what we call the circle, from its center? This piece right here being the radius. So, the first three postulates are postulates of construction. They allow you to invent, to bring forth something into existence out of nothingness. Look at postulate four, though. Postulate four, all right angles are equal to one another. This postulate is not saying I can construct a right angle. It's not saying how to produce a right angle. It says something about all right angles. They will be equal to one another. Postulate four is a postulate of equality. It is the first time in the postulates that we see this idea of sameness being articulated. Two things are exactly the same. If they're right angles, whether I'm over here or over here, I'm going to be the same. I am equal. So, three for construction, one for equality, and then the big boy. The big boy, the way I phrase it here, is Euclid's fifth postulate. And we're going to see why I refer to it the way I do is because Euclid is going to avoid using the fifth postulate as if it were poisonous. And this has left us with 2,200 years of debate, 
in mathematics over y. He could have made his elements much easier had he used postulate 5 as soon as possible. But instead, Euclid is actually going to build and write his geometric tome, his canon, if you will, and he is going to leave this postulate alone as long as possible. Well, now is the time to figure out why, or what is the best speculation I think we have. Well, let's read this particular postulate, shall we? If a straight line falling on two straight lines, okay, what does this mean? So, if we have two straight lines, and in this case, I'm going to make them infinite. If a straight line falling on two straight lines, that's his way of saying they cross over. It makes interior angles on the same side. <clears throat> <clears throat> makes interior angles on the same side less than two right angles. That means if this angle and this angle for some reason are less than two right angles, something must happen. Let's look at what he says happens. The two straight lines, if produced indefinitely, will meet on that side, which are the angles less than two right angles. Meaning if I continue these out, if I may have to go a long way, but eventually these two lines will meet over here on this side of this line falling on them. Notice what word is not in postulate 5. Parallel. Nowhere does it say this is parallel. But yet, postulate 5 is the one that we refer to as the parallel postulate. Euclid's parallel postulate. The fifth postulate. The Euclidean parallel postulate. Very famous. And all it tells us is, if one line falls on two others, if the same side interior angles on one side or less than two right angles, I have to meet over here if extended indefinitely. Postulate 5 is not a postulate of construction. It is not a postulate of equality. It is something different. It is a postulate explaining the nature of lines and angles. It will be referred to as a parallel postulate. So five postulates that separate into three themes. The first three are construction themes. Number four is an equality theme. Number five is a relationship about lines and angles that may or may not have to do with parallelism. This is cool. I hope this helps.